Hello and <coughs> Namaste and good evening to everyone. Sorry for the delay resume of the lecture in due to this COVID-19 pandemic and some of the research work. I was unable to continue the lecture. But today again we'll resume our previous lecture which was on USMLE Step 1 Revision 2021. And we will continue that revision. Uh, initially we have started the microbiology, then we'll continue with the immunology and other subjects as well. So let's begin our a previous uh, lecture, continuation of our lecture, continuing our review of this USML step 1 microbiology. We were on page 131 previously talking about the bacterial genetics among which we have talked about the transposons. I can re revise you once again on the bacterial genetics because this is the important for one of our questions and that is very important actually. So we are talking about the transformations. The bacterial genetics are the three main methods like this transformation, conjugation and transduction. Transformation is the one of the process by which a bacteria get transformed by become picking up the naked DNA from the environment. Suppose a pathogenic bacteria, highly pathogenic bacteria get dead and its genetic material is exposed in the environment. It disintegrate and exposed in the environment. Then the normal bacteria, the unharmful bacteria pick up that genetic material and then it's become powerful. Then it's become uh, transformed into the pathogenic or say you can say the active bacteria or say powerful bacteria by which they can kill they can get us infected and then make us sick suppose if for example you can take about the streptococcus pneumonia hemophilus influenzae type b and azervia this streptococcus pneumonia or hemophilus influenzae type b these are if uncapsulated organism in a normally but when they pick the genetic material from the environment and get transformed they form the capsulated and become pathogenic and invade our um, bypass our phagocytosis and then can cause us disease. This is the one of the transformation by picking up the genetic material from the environment. Then we are talking about the conjugation where it was like uh, there was a conjugation tube by which a bacteria F plus we call this is the F plus bacteria by which one of the F plus bacteria transforms its genetic material to the F negative bacteria by the help of the conjugation tube. So this is not another conjugation. There are two forms like F into F and HRF minus F. Then there was another that called the transduction. This is the way by which a virus, let me repeat you again, a virus that kills the bacteria. Normally viruses are smaller than the bacteria. Then also, even we are bigger than the virus, bacteria are bigger than the virus, but also virus can, if it's just it is causing disease to us and killing us, it can kill bacteria as well. So a small thing that is killing the bacteria, once killing, in the process of the killing, you can say they attack the bacteria and then bacterial chromosome get disintegrated and after disintegrated when they are found the new virus, they pick up some of the genetic material from the bacterial chromosome and then transform into the new bacteria. In this way, the genetic material is transformed. So by picking up the new um, genetics, they can change itself. By through the coming to, together and through the conjugation tube, they can extend the genetic material. Even some of the pathogenic vector one, we can say the Trump virus can carry the bacterial chromosome, bacterial DNA, and transform into another bacteria. This is the transduction. And there was another specialized form. There was another specialized form. So, which we are we are talking about transposomes. So this is the jumping gene actually, an extra gene, a jumping gene that was processed involved. This is a specialized segment of DNA which can copy itself and excise itself and then insert into the same DNA molecule or an un unrelated DNA example plasmid or chromosome. So this is the jumping gene, can jump from one place to another place, from plasmid to plasmid, plasmid to chromosome and then to the another organism as well. So it is known as the jumping gene. Now coming to the main feature of our today lecture which we, we are on the page now this is 131E itself and we are talking about the main feature of exotoxin and endotoxin. So look, talking about the exotoxin and endotoxin, exo and endo, these are the toxin. You can remember the toxin are the substance, these are the virulence factor, these are the chemical substance that is released by this bacteria and then they cause us the disease. There can be two types. Exo means that are released outside, endo means that is present within that bacterial cell. Now the differences is exotoxin are secreted outside from bacterial cell to into the environment and then they act on our different part of the cells, different part of the system, body cells, and then they can cause the disease by changing into different mechanism. Whereas the endotoxin, there are these are the thing, these are the bacterial component that get exposed when the bacteria get killed. Once the bacteria get killed, it comes into the environment and then they 
uh, mainly into our blood and then they activate the uh, three system like macrophage activation and complement pathway and in uh, this uh, tissue factor coagulation pathway and then it causes our DIC and all those side effect like fever shock and DIC. So this exotoxin that are released by gram positive and gram negative bacteria. So both gram positive and gram bacteria negative both means all of the bacteria can release exotoxin but endotoxin are usually released by the outer cell membrane of the gram negative bacteria only. So the major difference between exotoxin and endotoxin are exotoxin is released by the both bacteria gram positive and gram negative both whereas endotoxin is only released by the gram negative bacteria that is important. So secreted from the cell yes exotoxin is secreted whereas the endotoxin will not be secreted cell. their chemical nature chemistry is the exotoxin are polypeptide in nature whereas that is mainly endotoxin and lipid A component of lipopolysaccharide so this is the peptide protein whereas this is the lipid component as well as the LPS that is lipopolysaccharide these are the structure part this is saccharide or the carbohydrate part so this is protein nature this is lipid A as well as there is a polysaccharide portion polysaccharide location of the gene in comparison if you are comparing the location the location of the gene of the exotoxin are mainly present in the plasmid or bacterial phase why look anything that is secreted from any part any cell that is encoded into the gene that is this is regulated by the gene so once gene get uh, give the signal then only they get secreted or their action takes place so this this um, say command center or say gene is present in the plasmid or bacterial phase whereas in case of the endotoxin it is present in the bacterial chromosome that is important then toxicity this is highly fatal fatal dose of all, all, almost one microgram can be fatal but it is low fatal although this leads to the endotoxic shock if there because there are tons of bacteria inside your cell inside your body and then all then killed and then they activate this endotoxic shock mechanism clinical effect various effects we can see in the uh, different uh, different uh, clinical effect like there is the cholera uh, diphtheria toxin, exotoxin, sega toxin, etlebal toxin, anthrace toxin, cholera toxin, these all are the exotoxins. So there has the different organism have different exotoxin and they have the different effects. Whereas in case of endotoxin, all gram negative bacteria, they produce the endotoxic salt which contains fever, salt and disseminated intravascular coagulation. How they can form DIC? You can see this endotoxic mechanism and you can uh, where you can, these are all exotoxin effect, you can go, any, go, go through the, we will talk about this endotoxic mechanism where they activate the macrophage, complement activation and tissue factor activation and in this you can see they activate by macrophage interleukin 1 and 6, TNF, nitric oxide, this leads to the fever, uh, fever and hypertension and hypertension. Whereas the complement pathway, they use the histamine release, hypertension and edema and neutrophil chemotaxis. Well as the tissue factor activation, they cause the population cascade and DIC. So these are the effects of exotoxin and endotoxin and we will discuss in detail but here we are talking about what are the difference between exo and endotoxin. So in a can make a mode of action there are the various mode depending upon the, uh, which, what are the exotoxin and we will talk in detail. Whereas the, in, in endotoxin they induce the TNF, interleukin 1 and interleukin 6. Another difference between antigenicity induce higher titer antibody called endotoxins. These are the highly antigenic but they are low, low, poorly antigenic. So there will be no antibody form. Remember, there will be no memory cell, no antibody form because of your endotoxic, endotoxin. Whereas because of exotoxin, there will be high titer cell antibody in your body. Because of that, they produce the antibody they can use in the vaccine. They are toxoid, so they can trigger your immune cell and they can produce the vaccine. So we can produce the vaccine because to against this exotoxin organism they could, those can produce the exotoxin whereas the we cannot no toxoid forms and since there is no vaccine is possible for endotoxin heat liberality these are rapidly destroyed at 60 degree except the staphylococcal intertoxin and heat he e coli stable toxin so basically these are the organism that are these are the uh, toxin that are usually get destroyed at 60 degree and except there are the two organisms, two exotoxins and then mainly of the staphylococcal intertoxin and E. coli heat level toxins so they are not usually destroyed at 60 degree otherwise all are get destroyed so if you are boiling a food if you have anything that contains exotoxin you are cooking it you can giving heat above the 60 degree everything is going to be destroyed but in case of the endotoxin they are stable at 100 degree centigrade for one hour 
So when you get a killing your organs, if you are boiling your water, your bacteria get killed. But that water doesn't get free from the endotoxin. Although if you drink that water, it doesn't get absorbed from your gut, so it doesn't cause any endotoxic salt. But same water, if you apply, if you are surveilling a normal saline, this is a bacteria, you kill it, the endotoxin, if you give through the IV saline, that endotoxin is not destroyed, then they are going to cause you endotoxic salt. So you have to understand. Although this is released because we kill the bacteria. Once bacteria is killed, it gets into living into the outer environment. So, since it is not absorbed through grot, you can, the water is safe after boiling because bacteria is killed and endotoxin is not absorbed through the gut. Although exotoxin usually have some role in the gut, but endotoxin have only role if it is entered inside your blood. If it is into your blood, then it is going to activate the, those three pathways like a coagulation cascade, then there is the, another pathway called um, uh, histamine release, the tissue factors, and then macrophage activation. So that is only possible when it is in the blood, not otherwise. And then like, examples are like typical disease, tetanus, botulinum, diphtheria, and cholera. This is an example of exotoxin. You can see this bacteria is releasing exotoxin inside your environment into your cell and this is causing the host damage and everything. Whereas endotoxin is released only when bacteria get disintegrated, lysed, and then it reduces into the outside environment. Thank you.